Hello, I'm Dr. Rob McClafferty, a vascular surgeon, and this is a Society for Vascular Surgery briefing about varicose veins. Varicose veins in the legs are a very common affliction in both men and women, affecting upwards of 25 million people in the United States. Veins are the tubes in the body that carry the blood back to the heart. In the legs, there are deep veins, which one cannot see, and there are superficial veins, which one can see in or under the skin. In most cases, varicose veins occur due to an abnormal weakening and dilatation of the vein wall in combination with pooling of the blood due to gravity when standing or sitting. Symptoms can range from none to manifesting a painful ulcer on the ankle. Many people with varicose veins have symptoms that can be rather vague and somewhere in between the two extremes, but nevertheless very bothersome to the point of limiting activity. These symptoms can include aching, tiredness, or heaviness in the legs. Additionally, people can have burning, stinging, or itching in the surrounding area over the varicose veins. Not everyone realizes that these vague symptoms are caused from their varicose veins. The treatment of patients with varicose veins has changed dramatically over the past 15 years. These new, less invasive treatments can have a dramatic effect in relief, particularly for those patients plagued with vague, often debilitating symptoms. For the purposes of our discussion, we will focus on the treatment of the larger variety of varicose veins, often observed as the abnormally dilated ropey veins seen under the skin on the legs that become more pronounced upon standing. In contrast, treatment of spider veins, those smaller veins seen in or on the surface of the skin, will not be addressed. A basic premise concerning the treatment of varicose veins is that removal of them almost always relieves symptoms and makes the legs feel much better. Many people have heard the term varicose vein stripping. This traditional treatment involves making a small incision in the groin area and below the knee to expose the great saphenous vein. This superficial vein that travels from the ankle to the groin is a very common source of symptomatic varicose veins. While under general or spinal anesthesia, the vein is essentially pulled out between these two incisions. Additionally, very small incisions are often made during the same surgery to remove varicose vein branches coming off the abnormal great saphenous vein. In recent years, a new technique has been developed to treat the abnormal great saphenous vein with a less invasive procedure called ablation. Ablation is performed with the use of only a needle and a special catheter, that is, a very small plastic tube, which is inserted into the vein under the direct guidance using ultrasound imaging. After numbing of the skin and the tissue around the superficial vein, the catheter is inserted and heats the vein to a very high temperature which effectively causes the vein to shrink and close. There are different kinds of catheters, such as laser or radiofrequency probes, approved for this treatment, and your vascular surgeon can explain these in more detail. With this treatment, incisions are avoided, and the varicose vein simply shrivels up into an unnoticeable, small, closed, scarred tube under the skin. Not everyone is a candidate for varicose vein ablation. While ablation remains the most commonly used method, there are other less invasive treatments that may be better suited depending on the type and severity of varicose veins. Generally, these procedures are very safe and effective in relieving symptoms. Your vascular surgeon can help address these options during a thorough evaluation. This briefing is made possible by a grant from Cook Medical. To learn more about vascular health, visit vascularweb.org.